Salute people back. Fred White, Tales from the Pen. We're gonna do this live, so I'm gonna wait for some people to come in here. Wait for a few people to pull up. Some of you guys know, I did the Dog in the Yard podcast like a while back. Let me put this chat on. Can I put the chat on? Let me see how I put this chat on. So I got this iPad up here, y'all. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to mess with it. Let's go live. some people come up in here. Nick said in the barber shop. That's <laughs> Can you hear me, Nick? I got this iPad. Hold on. I don't even know where the volume is at. There we go. Tapping in from the UK. Salute, salute to the UK. John, what's going on? I can't see it, but you know, you know, I got. To, 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 you guys gotta understand. In these, it, what, what I'm seeing is like so freaking small. So unless you like a moderator, I can't really see the way. D King, is that Davies? I love your videos. I appreciate it. You know, I ain't been live in a while. I said, let me go live with the people. You know, sometimes it just be like that, man. Sometimes in life, period, you know, sometimes you just need a break from certain things, you know? And like I always say, I know it sounds weird to people. I don't consider myself a YouTuber, you know what I mean? I consider myself a husband, a, a, a father, you know what I mean? And with, with life things going on, I do YouTube on the side, you know what I mean? Again, you guys know I just came on here in the beginning just to get my story out and just talk to the kids. And I, I feel I've done that in two and a half years. You know, there's enough videos, you know what I mean? So sometimes I just get burnt out. Sometimes I just got life shit going on. Got three kids, this one's sick, then that one's sick. And that's how it is when you got a bunch of kids. Like once one gets sick, it's like, damn, they all, everybody's gonna get sick. That's how it goes, you know? So again, then we had birthdays, two, birth, two of my kids turned, you know, one turned five, one turned 14 and three days apart. Like, you know, just had a lot of things going on. Life shit, you know what I'm talking about? Life gets you caught up, that's a fact. Scorpio, what's going on? Chill well. Yeah, it's been a minute, man. OG, I see you. When you gonna be in the dog in the yard? Oh, I, I, I already was on dog in the yard. What happened is they got this new app. It's called Pod TV. So they trying to push the traffic over there. So they didn't put it on YouTube. They still may put it on YouTube, but right now it's on Pod TV. If you, what's up, Felipe? John. Listen, if you guys go to Pod TV, like go to your app store, type in Pod TV, P O D T V, it'll come up, you press it, and you get the app. There's no charge, there's no none of that shit. And then type in Dog in the Yard, and I'm the last episode. The thing is, here's a couple of things I wanted to explain. I wanted to explain after, you know, after it came out. First of all, we did that in a in an abandoned jail. Peace, peace, Stormy. We did the dog in the yard in a, an abandoned jail out in Newark. Shout out to Newark. My boy can't get right, you know he's out there. Ed, flushing, you know, you already know. 
Chill, hit that like. That's right, guys. Hit that like button. So, <clears throat> so we're going to talk a little bit today. So, we did the dog in the yard out in an abandoned jail, real shit. It was an old abandoned jail precinct-ish thing that still had the cells, the precinct, everything set up. You know what I'm saying? And it's a building there, and they, whoever owns it, they rent it out, I guess. To, I think Mano did a video shoot there, like, because I think I seen a video. I'm not sure what he was doing. Push out. I'm like, oh, that looks like the same cell. So, I'm assuming, I think he did. Anyway, I know a bunch of people have done videos out there in this jail. So... Now, when they film, them dudes film hard. Like, they go hard. They film, like, four or five seasons in one day. They start from, like, six, seven in the morning. And they be just, it, you know, it's floods of people in and out coming in, you know. But, um, my man Ja came because he know Boxing Dice, too. We were all in Clinton together. It was weird because one of the pictures... That you see, matter of fact, on my intro, you see me standing there and you see the dude in the yellow. That's Ja. You guys remember I did the, the interviews with Ja. I got a couple of pictures with Ja up in that intro. But in the yellow, when Ja's standing there in the yellow and I'm on the side, Box and Dice actually took that picture in Clinton. You know what I'm saying? So it was like a little family reunion type shit. You know what I mean? So we were out there hanging out all day. The vibes was good. People was ordering food. On the first floor, they had uh, the, the, I forgot the name of the show. With Hanks the Cat Lady. Well, what's the vibe? What's the vibe show? They had that going on on the first floor. And on the second floor, everybody was, you know, we were doing the filming. For, and we were there all day because they did like a little movie thing. I'm going to get to the comments in a minute. I'm just telling you, I'm just breaking this down so y'all understand about this interview. We was there all day. They was doing like some movie thing some filming so you know i had to you know what i mean i had to do my best leonardo dicaprio but anyway uh we did some filming on that and then they're gonna have a new intro for this thing so you know i'm in a couple things there i did all day with them they're filming and shit you know what i mean but one of the scenes and one of the things it was like we had to act like we were you know actually in the cell block and the cell was closed and it was weird for me, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I had to put on the jumpsuit. And you know, we got in the, I got in the cell and every, you know, a bunch of dudes got in the cells. I met a couple good dudes there. Uh, he's the rapper, uh, a noisy Bambino, uh, um, um, Frankie Benz TV. All of us was there because we were all filming and doing different things in the building. So we were all, we were playing prisoners. You know what I'm saying? We all had the jumpsuits on. You know, we, we were playing different parts and yelling out the gate. And I'm not going to lie to you. I know it sounds weird. But when I went in first, I was like, I, when I went in and then I, I closed the gate. Now, I could open it myself, you know what I mean? But when I closed the gate for the scenes and shit, it was a little weird. It was a little weird. I've heard, I've heard other people say it wouldn't have been weird for me. That's what's up. Tales from the print. Merch. I'm gonna put the link in the description. Stop playing. Listen, so it's hoodie season, y'all. You know what I mean? Just let me know what colors y'all want to hook you up. Anyway, so it was kind of weird, you know, when that gate closed, boom, and we filming the scene. You know what I mean? And we yelling down, yo, send me to that zone. And we passing kite, we passing lines back and forth, fishing. Fishing is we used to rip parts of the sheets off the bed, tie them on. And then slide something on the end, and it depends. If it was a cell, you know, if it was cells, you could put your hand out the door, it'd be like a lasso. Boom! Land that shit 10 cells down. Yeah, I'm nice like that, right? Like, so we used to play. So we were reenacting scenes and shit, and I'm gonna be honest with you, like, I got into the scene and everything. But it was like weird. Constant look like it's perfect. You know what I mean? It was weird. For me a little bit. You know? But once we got done filming and everything, I took the thing off and But I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. When I, when I first closed that gate and I was in there with that bed and I was in with the walls and I, I made sure because I could touch both sides. You know, I got them long ass arms, right? So look, I could touch 
both sides of my walls. So it was definitely a regulation. And it was weird for me to sit back in that cell. And that's why I tapped the tattoo on my arm that said, never again, I was in that cell like this. Never again. Never again. So we did that. So be honest with you, by the time I got to film, it was like damn near like one in the morning. So it was like a rush fit. It was like a rush thing. Some things were cut out, but I, I do want to rectify something. So in the interview, and I've spoke about this before, I talk about throwing piss in the dude's face, whatever, right? We've spoke about this. Nothing I'm proud of. But I wanted to let it be known that me and that kid already had prior incidents. Me and that kid already didn't like each other. It wasn't just like a random act. He had tried to throw some shit on me the night before. He, you know what I'm saying? He tried to throw some shit on me the night before. But, you know, I didn't get to tell the whole story on it. So it made it like, damn, why would I just go throw piss in a dude's face? Like, I would never do that. It was, he, he started the shit. You know what I'm saying? But when I was telling the story with them, then we got lost in translation. But, but whoa, whoa, whoa. Mike. Getting Pod TV now. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yes. Yeah, thank Mike. I appreciate the donation. Thank you, man. Let me make sure. Appreciate you. Let me see. Uh, okay, yo, yo, my. I just want to make sure you as a moderator already. So by the time, but anyway, so yeah, so that that story was a little, but the video, the, it was all right. It was a little rushed because again, it was like one in the morning, and there was still people to interview after. So I just wanted to get home, you know. But I just wanted to do it, but. We're going to do some other things in the future, too. And like I said, well, you know, I think I forgot the little name of the movie thing and the new intro they're going to have. You're going to see me in there. I just, could, I just couldn't and didn't want to talk about anything until it actually came out. You understand what I'm saying? Because I told y'all I did it. <laughs> but a lot of people say things, you know what I mean? And then when it hadn't come out for a while, I just didn't want to say nothing. I know some of my subscribers like, yo, Fred, what happened with the dog in the yard? I, it's not, wasn't, it wasn't my thing. And they were having technical difficulties to YouTube for some reason. That's what they were telling me then. And they said they want to, you know, put the traffic over there. Try to get some people over there to the new podcast, the world, whatever. And they may eventually still put it on YouTube. But it's free. Go look at it. Pod TV, Dog in the Yard, last episode. Fair way. You know, I think I... Yeah, I I, you know, I represented myself in the Tales community, you know, trying to try to get my quick message. Of course, again, everything was rushed. My brother, that's my boy right there, Naquan. Everything was rushed. You know what I mean? So it wasn't the best. But we on there, you know, we broke the ice. You know, they said they would come on here anytime too. So, you know, I'm just, again, I got life stuff going on. You know, I just have so much other stuff happening notorious what's going on oh my guy lance g i'm going back now looking q adams ah salute salute to alabama nice put you on audio put you on put you audio on spotify apple yeah you see what i'm saying uh yo i'm old i can't i don't i know I never really, I know I should be on Apple TV or Apple, the, the podcast, and I should be, but I just don't, I don't, like I'm not, this is not nothing I really aspire to do, you understand what I'm saying, this was just more like a hobby, this was more like knowing that I, I had a gift to talk to these kids, because I've done it so much in the past. So this is the only reason I started this whole thing. I really didn't do this. I really never started this for the money. And again, YouTube is not... I'm, sometimes people get it confused sometimes. Like, oh, he on YouTube getting money. Yo, I swear to God, it's like... I think it's like $10 per thousand views, so... Oh my God, you got 15,000 views. Nice. You made $150. You understand what I'm saying? It's not really... 
Not in this New York lifestyle. No disrespect to the people who can live on that. Not in New York. Not with three kids. Not with a family. You know? Not with, you know, th whips and, and the kids. and The kids are expensive. Them little fuckers are expensive. You know? And you guys know about, you know, my boy. You know, he's three. You know, dealing with the autism. So, you know, my mind be occupied with other things. So I don't want people to feel disrespected. That's why I wanted to just come up here on this quick live. Just let everybody know. I'm good. You know, it's just, I got life stuff going on. You know, if I wasn't good, you guys would know. You know what I mean? There's enough people that would reach out, you know. They would know. Somebody would know. Fred ain't doing good. I'm good. So I appreciate it because a lot of people have been reaching out like, Fred, where you at? <laughs> Fred, what you doing? Fred's good, man. You know, we got a lot of things going on in New York City. A lot of these kids killing kids. And you know what I seen the other day that I found interesting? I want everybody to understand this. I forgot the name of the channel, right? But the dude was breaking down the wars, the gang wars going on in the Bronx. He was naming the cliques. I don't know. I don't know the names anymore. OGs versus YGs, something like that. I don't know what the hell he was saying. But he was breaking it down, right? Who was the leaders? Who was this? And why this war is going on? Why the 13-year-old boy got killed? <clears throat> why the 16-year-old got killed in the Uber? Then the, after the 13-year-old ki kid got killed and ran into the store and died in the, in the store bleeding out. Right? And he broke down everything and broke down the gangs and who they are. And I thought to myself, if this guy can do that, what do you think the police is capable of? As I sat there and watched this, I said, wow. This is, I mean, he broke down everybody who's who, who's still in the streets, who's in jail, who's. And he's a YouTuber. Imagine what the police is doing. Cause I just, it, I just, I just can't understand how you keep putting the shit on YouTube. How you keep putting your shit on social media. I can't understand. I don't come from that um that era. That's not a disrespect to the young generation. It's just that somebody ain't schooling them right. They don't know any better. I see some of the older dudes doing it too, but it just, it's just amazing to me. When the blueprint is there, hear me, the blueprint has already been set. By people who've been in your same situation. And by people who resulted to doing what you're doing. The blueprint is set. It's there already. Death or jail. Wheelchair, hospital. I don't, but you get the point. The blueprint is there, but people still fall into this trap. I've talked about this analogy before, but I want people to bear with me for a second. A trap house. Whoa, whoa, chill, Will. Ah, oh, appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you for that donation. I appreciate you. A trap house. It's called a trap house. What is a trap? A trap is something set to entangle you. Maim you. Kill you. But we still call it a trap house. <laughs> I'm working the trap. 
I see it in the, I see it on, I'm, I'm like, yo, these dudes is crazy. I just don't want to point like who won, what YouTube, what videos I saw this, but it's just like, wait a second. And you still falling for this shit? Now you got to understand people. A lot of people are products of their environment. We understand that. We get that. Right? A lot of people are products of the environment. It's how you grew up. If you grew up in, you're right, I'm, I'm not saying this, just say me, myself. If I grew up in the mountains of, uh, you know, West Virginia somewhere, who knows how I would act? Who knows what type of tobacco I would be spitting? Who knows how much Mountain Dew I would be drinking? Now, that's not the point here. I didn't because I wasn't, I grew up where I grew up. And we understand that. However, when I see these young boys doing the same things I was doing, which led me to the penitentiary, there's no way I could just sit back and say, man, it's okay to do that. It's okay to live your life like that. It's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. The streets is a myth. Where can I watch that video? Oh, it's Storm and Norman. Go to, uh, you got to download the app, Pod TV. It's free. You don't got to put a fake name. Pod TV, P-O-D TV. Go to your app store, click Pod TV. It's simple. It's nothing crazy. It's no. And then just go to Dog in the Yard on the last episode. But it bothers the hell out of me. And I'm seeing right now what's going on here in New York. Where I see, you know, they label this, this, this drill music they got going on in New York. This is from them same videos I was watching on YouTube. And this guy broke everything down to me. He might have been a cop. I don't know. But I'm like, wow. He knows everything. And these kids is, you know, they're doing drill shit like Chicago. Shooting people down the block. On the next block. Some of these kids can't even cross the streets. Some of these kids can't really leave in front of their buildings. That's bananas to me. That's crazy. But again, I understand the mentality. But for me growing up, my whole area, we stuck together. So I get it. But we wasn't really warring with kids down the block. Not like that kind of war. Maybe, you know, a little something happened with somebody, you know. But not wars with people in our own community. Did I bring a lot of problems to my community? I did because the same way I went and did stuff, they would come and try to get, get us. They would try to come get me. I was like a target for them. Because I was always on every mission. Every mission. So again, I understand. I was on every mission. You can, you can know that I was there. That's why after the time when the cops came, they just, it didn't matter. They just know I was there. Let's start looking for this little fuck. So I had so many charges. 14, 15, 16, I was, it was different. Those years, those formative years. And I understand because I don't, I don't know what I was following. I was following the streets. I loved the streets. You know, and around that time, I me and my dad was going through something and I had came back to New York because I was living a little bit with my dad. But my dad got remarried and, you know, it was a whole bunch of things that really went into that. And I, I felt a little bitter towards my pops and I came back to New York and said, fuck everybody, fuck everything. And in the streets, I, I loved, I loved that love that I had. 
I loved the embrace. I loved knowing that these kids had my back. At least that's what I thought until shit gets thick. Because everybody's a gangster till shit gets thick. Everybody will hold you down until them bright lights come on. Everybody won't snitch until them detectives come in that room and ask you, do you want a cigarette? Right? Because as I always say, everybody preaches that death before dishonor bullshit because they've never been in death before dishonor situations. There's a big difference. Everyone can say what they would do. You can say what you would do. But would you, right? You don't know, you're not in them situations, you don't know. I know. So I lived that certain life. So that's just why I can relate. And I, I do understand. That's right. It's a fact. There's no real loyalty, man. That's why I say these streets is a myth, man. It's a lie. The hood don't love you. It's all lies. All dudes will do will put you on a t-shirt quick. Dude will put your ass in the Facebook post quick. Free my boy. And don't, and when you ask him, you, you write him on JPay? What's JPay? <laughs> my boy be on, <laughs> my boy be on 15 years. I see him then. <laughs> Because you know I don't want to see him behind no glass. I don't want to see him behind no wall. Get the fuck out of here. This hood's a fucking myth. It's a lie. So it bothers me when I see these kids, you know, following false idols. Although it was predicted for me at a young age, my destiny, that was just, just, just the way it was. I let everybody's perception of, of, of what my destiny was going to be actually become reality. I'm trying to live up to that shit. Because once I started getting that little reputation, I loved it. You know, and once, you know, and once I, you know, once I, I, I came off the porch, so to speak, it, it, it was no turning back. There was no turning back. And I immersed myself in that shit. I immersed myself in my, you know, my little, my little, my little area. I immersed myself in it as if I was an Avenger or some shit. Doing ridiculous shit. Risking my life. Risking other people's lives. For nothing, man. For nothing. Because some of these people were like, you know, they were like in the same position as me. Chill well again, appreciate you coming for real. Uh, much love again, chill well. Thank you for the donation again, my brother. Appreciate you. Once I fell into that life, I loved it. It was like, I, it was like that's what my purpose was. And this is what I was thinking when I'm 14, 15. This is what my purpose is. These. These people, these fellas right here, they all love me. And I love them. And I'm a, I'm a ride for them. Ride hard. That's why, hear me kids. That's why when they said call our next, next witness at my murder trial, and one of my good best friends, one of my good friends walked past me and got and I was like, what is he doing here? Where, where's he going? And he walked right past me. And he went up into the, you know, witness stand, whatever the fuck. I don't know what they, I don't, 
Never been in one of those. Went up in the witness stand, and they told him, put your hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. I said, what the hell is going on? I thought you loved me. With you right there on the stand, you. When them boys beat your ass, and you came back to me and the fellas, and you were crying. GH, thank you. Much love. Appreciate you. You understand. When you got your ass mopped and you came back here and told me and told us who did it. We went and turned up for a week straight. Because you was my brother. And you're on the stand. Now, I want you to understand this. I'm not, not, I need you to understand that this was my mentality. Because when you're a teenager, you're not able to, 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 to form rational decisions. Make life altering decisions. At that age, you think you do. But this was my mentality when I'm staring at him and he's pointing and he's they saying, <clears throat> and all he did, then here's the thing. As I'm looking at him, I'm saying, they offered me two and a third to seven people. I need people to understand this. They offered me two and a third to seven for me to get in that little box where he is right now. I'm replaying this shit in my mind. Where he's in that box, Box right there, they offer me two years for something he did. And I said no. Because I still had that code of the streets. I'm still under the impression the hood still loves Fred. I'm still under the impression that these streets have love for me. How is that going to affect me in this courtroom? I don't know, but I know the streets have love for me. How could this guy be on the stand telling them I did something that he did? Now, playing that role right there, I need people to understand. This is what I thought I was, and I was a teenager at the time I'm on trial for felony murder. So I'm taking myself back into that situation. And that's why I can relate to these kids, man. Because they believe these fucking streets is a fucking love them, man. They believe this. They believe that their people would not get up on that stand. And especially lie. He tried to send me, this guy right here tried to send me away for the rest of my life for an accident one and number two is he just put me in his place I told y'all that story I did my time I, I accept what I, I accept my responsibility because if I didn't stop that jeep the kid would still be alive that young man but I did not do, I did not chase him. I did not, I was a, a block down the street. They did what they did. And he just put me in his place. And that's on my mama's grave, on my three kids. But that's neither here nor there. My life turned, I can't turn back. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I made a bad choice. Trying to be a tough guy, trying to be a killer. And that was just going to be my destiny because it was just the lifestyle I was living. I was going to be dead or I was going to be in jail. I was going to make those counselors a prophet. This, is the, this was my destiny. But it, then it was my destiny for this purpose. So I can do this and translate it. for both sides, for these kids and for the older generation trying to understand these younger kids. Because sometimes when I get lost, sometimes I'm like, I don't understand this shit. No, I do understand it. 
There's no positive role models in these communities, man. And the ones that are, 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 are you know, don't have enough funding or, or anything to really get their message out there, man. They don't. All the fathers, where's the dads? Dads, half the dads is in jail, half of them is, half of them don't care. These kids grow up different. I knew that once I hit Rikers Island. And here I am, a teenager. And some of these kids been locked up since they're 10, 11, 12. So they've been locked up six, seven years by the time I just hit my first time. And even though we look the same, we not. Even though we both be, be here together and we may be the same age, we're not. A lot of these kids grow up different. No father figures. Babies getting involved in these, these, these organizations at a young age. It just, it, it, it bothers me, man. I get emotional. Because sometimes I feel like there's nothing I can do. Like, what could, what could I do then, I, you know? I know a few people will listen to me and this is what I could do. This is what I'm doing. I'm trying. Because I hear people all the time, sometimes they leave it in my comments, I delete that bullshit. When you write bullshit in my comments, I delete that shit. And so my moderators is on point anyway. Fred, what kind of change? You ain't making a difference. What it? And then I'll write back before I fucking delete them. And I say, well, what are you doing to try to make a change? What are you doing to try to make a difference? Again, we not the same. Delete block the fuck up out of here I'm trying I'm trying to let people understand that there's, that there's no faith in this shit man when they start throwing football numbers at your ass when they start throwing football numbers at you when they start talking you know 10 to 30 20 to 40. Those are football numbers, man. Oh, everybody's, everybody, again, everybody really believes that they're going to go in and they're just going to hold it down and that's going to be it. <laughs> it's not how it works. Not how it works. Maybe the seasoned, seasoned, seasoned ones are going to lawyer up. That's what you're supposed to do. Right? Get you in the room. They come in. Uh, yeah, we want to talk to you. Am I under arrest? No, we just... You can literally get up and walk out the room. We just want to question, well, I don't, I don't talk without my attorney. We walk out. Now, if you're under arrest, then you say, I want my attorney. But, again, these are things that you know since... Starsky and Hutch fucking days. You have the right to remain silent. Nobody fucking remains silent. Nobody does. He's in the next room. Which This way or this way? He's there and he's there. Oh, it was him and he passed him the gun. It sounds crazy, right? But that's the way it is, man. Right? And especially, like, if, you know what I mean, you got kids, you got a family, you got... Diff it's different. That's why I don't put myself in those situations. That's why, even on here, you got to see, I don't, nobody comes from, I don't bother nobody. I stay in my motherfucking lane. Stay in my lane. That's it. Uh, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, said Darian. Uh, maybe we can try some. Yeah, I'm. I can't read. I know. It's, I can't see that. How does? How to say that name? Scorpio. Salute. Anthony Jordan. Tapia. Roy Bourne. 
appreciate you too, man. Jason, feelings. TJ, Salute H again, man. Thank you, John Edgar, everybody in here, man. I appreciate it. Sometimes I just get lost talking people. That's part of the ADHD, you know what I mean? And everything else. But, you know, the bottom line is it hurts my spirits. It hurts my spirits because these kids, some of these kids is born and they don't even have a fucking chance. Some of these kids is raised in environments where they don't even have a chance, man. There's not enough done in the communities. There's not enough community centers. There's not enough positive people. There's not, you know, like I don't know the answer, you know? But I'm trying, again, to those people who say I'm not doing anything. You talking about me? You talking, am I? Right, right. Some, some, some people, man, they come off their stoop and it's over with, man. And they get locked up and then they get institutionalized and even the ones that come home. If you've done a long stretch and you were wild in jail and it's going to be hard for you to, 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 to cope out, out here. Because there's so much disrespect going on all around you that, you, you know, your violent ways may pop up. But anyway, so I, I got some other good news, people. I, I got some, like, six some people up in here. So let's change up the, uh, you know, I got to shake that off right there because I got a little emotion talking about these kids, man. You know, I love these kids, man. Just for the pen. I love the kids. Listen, so here's the positive news. So there's certain things I couldn't. More money. Damn, bro, I wish you could go to schools. I, I do, I do. I speak at junior high schools, high schools. I spoke at CUNY Law, Chill Will. I spoke at Brooklyn Borough Hall. I've been in the UN speaking. So I've, I've, I've done it. I just haven't done it in a little while, this whole corona thing and everything. Felipe, thank you for the donation, man. And Chill Will, thank you again for another donation, my brother. Let me see, wait, Fred got three. Fred, I got three kids, two daughters, one Sam, you know. Of course, that's my guy. He was a troublesome kid about a year ago. He was in pins. Your teaching have spun him around in the right direction. Look at that right there, people. You guys see, how do I fucking pin this motherfucking comment? How do I put, somebody pin that shit or something. See that, Felipe? See that, this is why I do what I do, people. See that? His son is going through some things. You see that trouble? He put him in front of Fred White's videos for a year and look. I don't make this shit up. This is why I do what I do. This is why I'm passionate about it. Cause people know I'm real. People, that's why again, what I was saying before when people, cause people know I'm real. The shit I'm talking about is real. And Fred, I never tried to be a gangster. Never, I never was a gangster in prison, never. I, 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 I stood my ground. I never was a gangster, never was with the bullshit. And that you guys know I preach that. You know what I mean? So that's why people understand the realness in me, man. And that's the, that's the comments I'm fucking talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about. I appreciate you. You know, Sam got the other, you know, I went and got another Golden State hat, right? Um, hey, babe, I went and got another one. They're in Iowa, you know, but that's my guy. Anyway, so back to the good news, right? So there's been certain things I couldn't talk about because so... January of 2019, I'm not going to get too detailed into it because it is what it is. My daughter, who the whole time lived in the Bronx, was placed in, in my care while proceedings went on. So, she, you know, for those my subscribers who really know, y'all know, she's been with me since I channeled, started this channel two years ago. You know, she, she came a little before that. Right? So she's been with me. So I've been going. What's up, what's up Dion? So I've been going, dealing with all this, uh, uh, you know, court stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, and um, 
Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday was my last hearing. And your boy, I get emotional, y'all, but your boy went full soul custody. That's right. I did. I got full soul custody, man. Yeah. I'm so proud of myself. It's fish. Done deal. You know. Sometimes they say for the fathers it don't work and you can't do it. I'm here to tell you that's a lie. Thank you, man. I'm here to tell you that's a lie. You know, if you if you you know can provide better, if you can do better, and again I'm not gonna get into situations because I can't. Then how they were living before is what it is. As long as you're a good dad, as long as you're persistent, as long as you're in your fucking child's life. You hear me? I'm so, so me, me. Yeah. How's that happen? It happens. Very rare. I get it. Very rare. Appreciate everybody, man. Thank you. Very rare does it happen. We know this, especially in New York. But let me let the fellas in on this because let me tell you something. I, I, I get mad at people. I think I've told you before. One client of mine, he started talking. He started telling me, you know, about his kids that she don't let him see the kids and they, they, they don't live too far like from where he was living and she don't let him see the kids and, and, and she don't and I just I just I don't got time for that fucking excuses I don't have time for that shit we're not the fucking same and again I know I'm, I'm maybe messed up for like looking down upon certain people and certain things but if you're gonna be a fucking deadbeat don't we're not and I cut him off as a client I cut him off as a client because he's telling me all this she won't let me see and he hasn't seen him his kid in eight, eight months the other one in a year some shit like that and I was just I was just I was just sick I'm sick with that what are you talking about I don't want to hear what you what she does unless they're in another state so I, like I'm going nothing nothing's gonna keep me from my kids man I don't care if my kid was in fucking Antarctica and I'm gonna make sure I go see him at least every weekend you know what I'm talking about so when people are start telling me she won't, she won't let you, she won't, sh and that's fucking excuses, man. And that's the problem with society. That's why a lot of these kids grow up without their dads, because a lot of these people don't know how to be dads, and a lot of people aren't ready to be dads because the reality is, it's tough being a dad, man. It's tough. Whoever told you it was easy is lying. They're lying to you. Because there's so much emotions. Like, if you're involved in your kid's life, there's so much emotions that go on. There's so much things that go on. There's so much, you know, you don't even want them to fall or get a bruise or, you know, like, you, you're protective of your kids and, and you, you want to do for your kids. And I just, that's why I don't fuck with deadbeats, man, is my bottom line. And that's the problem. That's, a, that's it's, it's just, it just makes me sick when I hear it. And I cut that dude off. He's never gotten in my car, motherfucking again. He don't deserve the ride. And, and, and luxury, you know what I'm saying? He don't deserve luxurious. Deserve luxurious? And you ain't seen your kid in a year? Fuck out of here, we're not the same. We're not the same. And so, part of it, but again, I can't get too much, but I always had to watch what I said from the beginning. And I, I, I've had thrown hints out there to my main subscribers who understand that certain things, I always keep saying that certain things I can't talk about, I can't, that is why. Because I had that shit going on. And then what happened was, not going to say who, but whatever, whoever did it on these, told the courts about this channel. Yeah. <laughs> told them, you know, how could I be fit when I have these stories and, 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 and things and, 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 and things that happened in my life and things that I had to do because of the situation I was in. <laughs> Excuse me. So courts and courts and, you know, other people, uh, you know, reviewed my stuff. Yeah. And you know what? Next time I had went to court, they said, look at me. Love what you're doing. Boom. Backfire. <laughs> Boom. That, that gun wasn't supposed to go off. Yeah, but it did. So, you know, that's why I always was, that's why certain things, uh, yeah, certain videos I even took off. 
because I was like, I don't want them to think this. But then my, my message, then I started realizing that I, I have told those type stories, but there's always a message behind it and why you shouldn't go to jail and why you shouldn't be put in these situations. Because people could say, well, he went to jail and he stabbed somebody 21 times. Okay, I'm not saying I would have did that in the street or who, but in that situation, that's what had to be done. He cut somebody and gave him a few hundred. Okay, and that I def okay. Yes, but there was a message behind it. There was a message behind that. When you put yourself in those situations, that type of shit happens. Don't put yourself in those situations. That's the, the moral of the story. Because sometimes you have to do things maybe you didn't want to do, but some things that had to be done because of the situation. Because like I always say, once you're in there, now you got eyes on you. Now you got to watch who you talk to. Because you don't know if this dude in the other jail, he was a rat. Like you don't, you got to, your circle got to be tight. But there's always, people say you don't trust nobody. There's always a couple people you trust. That's how it is, man. Especially like in medium security jails because like if you get into something in the yard, you fight, boom, 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 boom. You go into the box. Now everyone saw you from your house that you, dudes could go back to the house and pack your shit up and rob you. So you always got to have one or two dudes that's cool with you that, yo, you get into something, they're going to make sure that all your shit gets to you. Because when the police come and pack your shit up, they're just packing what's in that, in that cube or in that, you understand what I'm saying? It's in the medium security. They're just coming. What bed is he? They're taking everything there. But if dudes already know that you were going to the box and they already had, they saw you have the fight, they're going back to the house. They're going to rob you. So when the police come, hit the police is taking what's there, but it, it, they don't rob them already. That's how it goes. There's fucking snakes in there, man. Sneak these motherfuckers. You know, very rare. There's few that will come up and take your shit, but most motherfuckers is just fucking sneak these, rob your shit. You come back, your shit missing. What the fuck? 50 motherfuckers. You don't know what the fuck? Who the fuck? Now what? It's a lost feeling. I know, but I do. I picked the herbs, what it is. He was in the house as long as he knew. He, I, I had to do it. Does that make me violent? I mean, listen, it means that I handle my fucking business and I'm no gangster. I told y'all that. Never did gangster shit. I represented when I had to. Especially when the eyes was on me, that person, people looking. Mm -mm. I'm not gonna be a victim. Mm -mm. But people tried to use those type of things against me. So that's why I was always, I always had to be really, really mindful of certain things that I've said on here, or things that I've done in my life, or anything, because I always knew that other eyes are watching, and they still are. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. But anyway, people, man, I've been up here like an hour. I just wanted to uh, come up here and share that good news, man. Soul custody for your boy. You know? And oh, this is what I wanted to say real quick. A lot of people think that, like, those laws, like, like for instance, like, when I said it's very rare that a dad wins, right? But you have to understand this. Just, just when these, a lot of these courts are still built on foundations of the forefathers. A lot of these courts, laws as bylaws are still, you know, 1700s types stuff, as weird as it seems. So when a lot of people say males don't get the, the custody, it's because it was set up that way because they didn't want, it was against women's rights. So a lot of women think now it's like, yeah, I'm going to win rights. That's great. But the reality of it was set up for the, to do that. Okay. It was set up because what happens is they didn't want women in the workplace, right? This is when the whole women's movement, they didn't want women in the workplace. They didn't want women out and about. They didn't want women to have rights. So during custody things, it was stick the women with the kids. That was the actual original foundation of everything else. You understand? So. Sometimes people get it wrong with it. It's not set up for the men to win. No, it's actually just set up. It was trying to put the women down and keep the woman down. So there you go. I just gave you a little history, a little bit about women's rights. And the reality is that's why 
in courts. 90% of the women get, you know, especially back then. So, all right. All right, y'all. Got to go. Love you guys. I appreciate everybody who donated. I, hold on, hold on, hold on. Appreciate everybody who donated. Love you guys. Um, Got to run. I just wanted to come up here and give you that good news. And, again, Dog in the Yard is up. It's just on Pod TV. Go to your app store. Click Pod TV. It's free. No sign up. No, 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 nothing. You don't need no nothing. Sign up. Just put the app on there. Love you guys.